Hey, big baby, we back at it. You know what I'm saying? We just stepped our game up a notch. You know what I'm talking about? You wasn't there. The podcast, I believe this is volume eight, man. Um, this one is sponsored by Glow House Gaming. Go online, go on Instagram, look them up, Glow House Gaming, man. That's the uh, home of the studio. It's going to be the home of the podcast. It's a beautiful environment. I want to thank my cousin Self for looking out for us, man, helping us step our game up a notch. You know what I'm talking about? Taking this thing to the next level. You dig? Um, Today, we're going to talk about Hot August Nights, man, and uh, meeting Mac Dre for the first time, and how awesome is it, it is, you dig, and how awesome it was, you dig, to meet Mac Dre, you dig, and um, how going to Hot August Nights was, was, was such an epic event for everybody in the Bay Area, Northern California especially, you know what I'm saying, it was, it was something real epic and something real special, you dig, and and how we seen Mac Dre for the first time and meeting him and just how it all went down and how it all took place, you dig? So Hot August Nights, for anybody who knows in Northern California, is like a, um, a staple in, in Northern California. So every year you have to take your old school. If you're from Oakland, you're from Sacramento, you're from Vallejo, you're from um, EPA, anywhere in Northern California, you would slide up to uh, Hot August Nights once you got your toy together, your whip, you dig what I'm talking about? Once you put that thing on the map, man, you understand me? You got it all together with them fresh gold things and that fresh candy paint, you dig what I'm talking about? You would take that thing up north, man, you understand me? And go to read on the Hot August Nights, man, and let them know that you had arrived, man, that you was just in me really established. Do you hear me, big baby? You feel what I'm talking about, though? So, um, as a youngster, man, all you wanted to do is put gold things on something, flip some candy one time, put that wood grain steering wheel on there, them 415s with that Zeus and that zap code, do you hear me, big baby? And slide up to Hot August Nights, man. Show them that candy one time, man. You understand that candy paint, man. You and your relatives, your family members, man, you slide up, you dig? As a youngster, man, you know, seeing the OGs get their old schools together, man, and, and and, and putting them on the truck or sliding up to Hot August Nights, man, you would just, it was something that you wanted to do. Anybody from Northern California knows, man, you know what I mean? You got the side shows, we got concerts, we got different stuff, but Hot August Nights is where you really profiled that thing, you dig? And it had to be together for you to even make it to Hot August Nights. You couldn't put them buckets on the road, you know what I'm talking about, trying to make it up to Hot August, man. That thing wouldn't make it, man. It was a lot of people who ended up on the side of the road trying to make it to Hot August Nights. You dig what I'm talking about? And um, so this year, don't, don't let me get the line or nothing. We didn't have no old school. But just going to Hot August Nights, just getting up there was an epic thing, you dig? And it was just cracking everywhere, you dig? You get up there, you get a hotel room at the Circus Circus or something, you know what I mean? And it's cats and females from everywhere, big baby. I mean, everywhere. You dig what I'm talking about? So this year, I want to say uh, me and about 15 to 20 of the homies decided we're going to go to Hot August Nights, man. We're going to get us a couple of rental cars, man. We're going to pack up in them things, and we're going to slide out, you dig? Um, this one was real epic. I don't know if this was my first Hot August Nights, but this one was extra epic because the big homie, Big Drama, um, had got out the pen, and he just got a chance to really live his life and really experience things because he was locked up for so long. So it was epic for us that not only was we going, but we had Big Drama with us. You dig? Rest in peace to, to Drama. We love you. Um, it was just something, an epic time for all of us, you dig? And it was at a time when... A lot of the neighborhoods were still together. Um, anybody who knows San Francisco history or knows about the turfs, it was a lot of turf wars, a lot of things that separated us and, and, and spread us apart. So at this time, we were still together, especially in my turf, in my neighborhood, in Lakeview, we were still one. So we had a chance to actually um, do something as a group, you dig, as a core. You, you dig what I'm talking about? So I had never met Mac Dre before. I have seen Mac Dre a couple of times. Um, Back in the days, my cousin, Aladdin, used to dance for the group called Club Nouveau. So him and Kyrie, which was the producer, of, was the owner of Young Black Brother Records, Kyrie um, had a real good relationship with my cousin Aladdin. So Aladdin used to take me to the studio that Mac Maul and Mac Dre and them would record at when they was younger, you dig? So I don't know if I met them back when I was younger, but I don't think I ever met Mac Dre. So I remember seeing him a couple times. One time I was in Hunter's Point, and I seen that silver bin slide up. 
Dre had the, the afro still, you feel me? I looked over, I'm like, man, that's Mac Dre right there. That's him, you feel me? He slid past, you know, when you see people or when you hear him rap and different stuff like that, everybody's a superstar to you, especially when you haven't met him before, you dig? It's just like, okay, any rapper you could think of, they might be struggling living at their mama house, but the fact that they on the radio, that they in your deck, in your CD, it was something epic. So to see Mac Dre slide past, it, 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 was, it was big for us, you feel me? Or big for me, so... I had never met him personally, so this year, like I said, we we piled up in a few rental cars, you dig? Um, I remember us trying to go to Hot August Nights before, and some of my homies, it was a, a, a smoker rental, and we was in it, and me and my bro fed, we was about to go, we was thinking about it, but I was like, man, we can't take this car up to Reno, we not going to make it, bro, it, we not going to make it. So we get out the rental, <laughs> give it back to the smoker or whatever, we see Matt the Cat and Killer Key and, and Keon, they in the rental right after us. They like, we going to Hot August Nights. We like, what? Not in that thing. They like, we going. We like, man, that thing was just overheating on us, bro. Don't take that to Reno. I'm telling y'all. Man, they made it to Reno and had the time of their life, you dig? That was before we ever got to go. We should have took that rental back then, man, and went on and went up there. I remember them saying they got to Hot August Nights, Key dipping the rental, you know what I mean? He acting a fool, the police got on him. They take Key to jail. Matt, the cat is damn near stuck in Reno. He hits the casino on the um, slot machine for about seven, 800 and they took Key to jail. So that was one of my earliest memories of the homies going to Hot August Nights. And I remember Pone trying to take his marrow up there before, too. Rest in peace to Pone. Um, he tried to take his uh, marrow up there one time, and it didn't make it. He came back on the flatbed tow truck. You dig? But Pone was like 17, 18 years old with a with an old school that was so epic. And one thing about my neighborhood is we had old schools and we had cars. San Francisco in general, it was kids basically having cars that today would go for Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. We didn't even know um, what how epic of a childhood we had. You would dip through Levy on any day and see nine and ten old schools outside, and it was mostly teenagers who had them. The big homies was having money and doing their thing, of course. But a lot of times after they was finished playing with something, they let us get it. You know what I mean? Let us buy it. Let us have it. Pass it on down to us. So it was such an epic thing to be, you know, children living a childhood that was just so enormous and so crazy. At the moment, we didn't know. We were just in it, just living. So we didn't know how, how big it was and how great things was for us at that time, just living and, and doing all the different things that we got to do. Nor did we know that a lot of our friends from our childhood wouldn't make it to see today. You dig? Uh, um, with God's graces, I'll be 40 in a few months, and a lot of my friends died in their 20s, teenagers, 21 years old. Paul was like 21 when he passed away, you dig? And now that I'm about to be 40, I understand how young that was, how innocent that was, and how much life, um, how much more life it was to be lived at that time, you dig? So anyway, we hop in the rental cars. At that time, you understand me? I am the thizzle man. Do you hear me, big baby? I had it. You understand me? You know what I'm saying? Anybody who knows me, they're going to be like, why well, I had them things back in the days, you dig? So we decide we're going to go to Hot August Nights. I got the party favors, you know what I'm saying? We coded and loaded. At this time, it's Jabos and Jordans, big baby. If you wore anything else, man, you understand me? You couldn't get in the car with us. Do you hear what I'm talking about, big baby? So it's me, Say Stunner. Um, Ping Ping, um, uh, Cousin D, you know, it was a gang of us that went that time. And I just remember when we got there, we, as soon as we get to, soon as we get to Reno, right, they got their cousin, saying them got their cousin CJ with them. Now CJ had never, ever taken a thizzle in his life before, you dig? So he decides we going to Hot August Nights, he's going to take a thizzle, man, for his first time, you dig? So... Once we get off the road, we get up to Hot August Nights. I think we stopped at Burlington Co. Factory or something like that. Everybody grabs some uh, fresh little fish. You know, this is back when you grabbed some stunner glasses. They didn't have to be designer. At the local gas station, man, you know what I mean? Anywhere you could get some crazy, ill-looking glasses, man, that's where you got them from. The gas station, the, the corner store, anywhere that had some, some glass that looked like they was just off the hook, you was grabbing them, man. That's what stunner shades was to us. It wasn't Gucci and Versace now. We love that. We love, you know, designer shit, of course, man. But back then, a white T-shirt, some Jabos and some Jordans, man, and some ill-ass stunner glasses, and you was the guy. You was the dude. You hear what I'm talking about, big baby? So we made a pit stop or whatever. I passed out the party favors. Everybody on. We beaking and tweaking. You know what I'm talking about? You, you understand the lingo. You know what I'm saying, big baby? So just so happened when we pull up to uh, Reno, 
it's like an empty parking lot before we even get a room or anything. So we decide we finna, you know, pull over, stretch our legs, you know what I mean? We happy to be here. We made it. We in Reno. It's hot August nights. So as we pull over, we park these rental cars and things, and um, CJ jumps out the rental car. Like I said, this is his first time ever taking a thizzle. He has never, ever taken one before, you know what I mean? This is his first experience. So when CJ gets out the car and they turn on the music and we feeling ourselves, we campaigning, you dig, we in Hot August Nights, this dude starts doing some of the illest dances that you have ever seen. Now, if you've ever taken a thizzle, you know that your limbs and things get real, real loose, real limber, so you'd be doing all the illest dance moves that you didn't even know you could do. Do you hear me, big baby? So he's outside damn near doing the, the bird and all this shit. All the dance that Mac Dre was doing in the thizzle, uh, in the Trill TV and all that different shit, CJ was doing those dances that night or that day when we got the Hot August Nights. He's doing the bird. He's doing some of the illest shit we ever seen. We are all just, uh, um, we are being entertained by this guy, by the fact that CJ just feeling himself and he going crazy. So we laughing like crazy. We out there dancing. We feeling ourselves. We on thizzles, you know what I mean? I want to say we, I had blue dolphins or something like that that I had passed out. So CJ's going crazy. He's dancing. We all standing around watching him as we dance and going crazy. Now, as we look up, who hits the corner other than Mac motherfucking D-R-E, big baby? You know what I'm talking about? In that, in that uh, root beer cougar on gold D's. You dig? So we look. I'm like, damn, that look like, is that? It's the it's Furl himself, Ronald Dragon. You hear me? So Mac Dre sees us out there acting a the fool. Now this is just to go to show you how down to earth Mac Dre was, how much of a real individual he was. The average rapper would have seen a group of dudes out there acting stupid. You know what I mean? Too many of them been like, oh, I'm not pulling over by them. They, they could be with the shit. They could be trying to pull some anything. Mac Dre sees us up there having our own little party, having a good time. He pulls the cougar over in the lot immediately. Big baby, do you hear me? So. Furl pulls the cougar over, he hops out, he looking at CJ like, man, my boy going crazy right here, like, dude is a real one, you feel me? So Mac Dre out there fucking with us, we politicking, man, females is pulling up, you know what I mean? Of course, we elated, we out here with Mac, when the females and shit seeing us, it making us look like we with Mac Dre, you feel me? It's Mac Dre, yeah, yeah, we with Mac Dre, you see us, you know what I mean? We playing it off real good, plus we high as a kite, you dig what I'm talking about? So we having a moment, you know what I mean? Females is pulling up, we snapping pictures and shit. This is before camera phones, you young puppies, you know what I'm talking about? You ain't, you ain't had that, you had to go get you a uh, couple of them disposable joints from Wall greens or something, man, and had them things on deck, get you about 32 pictures out of each one, man, and hold on tight, hope you don't lose that thing, you hear me, big baby? So, we take pictures with the Mac, you know what I mean, with Furl, you feel me, we out there, we politic, we have a beautiful time right quick, it, it, it seemed like we was out there for about two hours, we probably was out there for 20 minutes, man, but in the moment, you know what I mean, you feeling it, you living it, it was our, my first time at Hot August Nights, it felt like forever, and to meet Mac Dre, and the fact that he was so authentic and down to earth you hear me big baby so rest in peace to the mac you know what i'm saying so at this time we have been doing a lot of shit together as a group lake comanche lake berryessa you dig um all these different concerts we was really just feeling it and, and doing a lot of shit together like drama getting out the pen brought us back brought us together you feel me and had us as a core as a unit you feel me and big drama was the big dog he was a big homie he was the type of individual that when you had him with you you felt safe, you feel me? And you feel like, drama feel like he could beat anybody. So when you was with B Big Drama, you feel like you were ready to go one-on-one -on -one with anybody. So your confidence is up. You ain't worried about nothing, you feel me? We feel like we'd take on the Army and the Navy if we had to. Do you hear me, Big Baby? So um, we hadn't seen drama yet. So we get, um, we get to the uh, room. It's a hotel across from Circus Circus. Every room in Hot August Nights is booked. All that last minute trying to get a room shit, that shit don't work at Hot August. Everything is booked. So we get there, we ain't got nowhere to sleep really. We then they're contemplating sleeping in these rental cars, you feel me? So I go over to the um to the lady right there across the street from uh Circus Circus and at the little motel right there, she like, they ain't got no rooms. So we out there, we down there in her parking lot for about an hour just chilling, doing nothing. So I go back to her, like, man, you ain't got no room. She like, you know what? Somebody just checked out. I'm like, what? So I go. Put the money down instantly. I'm like, okay, I got a room for us, you dig? It's only two beds. Now, my homies, man, 
you know, I don't know if y'all know, but the homies be chimmy and cheap as hell. So I didn't got us a room, but don't nobody want to kick in. I'm like, all right, it's all good. Y'all ain't coming in my room, you feel me? Y'all don't want to pay. Y'all can't stay, big baby. You feel what I'm talking about? So I get the room or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? So at this point, it's probably like about 15, 20 of us. We didn't all met up now by now, you dig? So we high as a kite. Um, I get the room. We go in the casino. Now, I ain't never been to the casino to being able to shoot dice before. This is um, a time when um, we built a bond with my Oakdale partners, with, with my Oakdale partners, Jomo, uh, Giggs, Laura Lokes, you feel me, names, all the homies from the deal. We built a rapport with them at this hot August nights. So I go up in there. When I walk, when I get, when I go in the casino, it's nighttime when we get there, right? I go in the casino, I get on the dice. There's some fools from East Oakland on the table. We got the table lit, you dig? They betting against me, you feel me? I'm going crazy on the dice. I'm hitting they ass. My boy Jomo right there. I'm like, damn, little Joe ain't here right now, but I'm finna hit this foe. Jomo like, I'm right here. Here go Joe right here. I'm like, okay, Jomo, I'm finna hit this foe. So we shooting dice. The Oakland homies betting against us, man. You know what I mean? It was all in fun, you dig? It wasn't no, no disrespect or nothing we took personal. Matter of fact, my homies from Oakland, the, the dudes from Oakland that was at the table that was betting against us, um, later on down the line they had a concert, uh, Juvenile E40 at the Cow Palace. And and I told I told the dude in Oakland, I do the dude from Oakland, I was like, yeah, man, I'm from Lakeview, but we'll be on Q Street on Crusader and Hunters Point. If you ever slide through Hunters Point or Frisco, pull up to the Crusader store, man. You're going to see me out there. We're going to roll up the real carpet for you as we was talking shit. And crazy part about it, at that concert down the line, that fool ended up pulling up on the queue, man, hopping out. I want to say his name was Keno or something, man. If you ever see this podcast or you know him, he was from East Oakland, man. He was a real individual, man. He put up with his little female, hopped out. We smoked one. You know what I mean? We treated him real good. He was a stand-up individual. But anyway, so we shooting dice or whatever. We get off the dice now. Anybody knows about casinos, ain't no clocks on the wall, you dig? So you'll be up in there and lose track of time like crazy. So like I said, we went in there, it was nighttime. When we walked out the casino and went back on the strip, the sun was out. I was like, God damn, we'd have been in the casino for like five or six hours and it felt like we was in there for 45 minutes an hour. We had been on the dice table for like five or six hours. We probably got there like two and like late at, started gambling probably like two in the morning. We didn't leave the table till it was like six, seven in the morning, you dig? So I'm feeling it, you know what I mean? I'm probably up six, seven hundred. You seven hours to win seven hundred. I know it don't sound like a lot, but back then, you understand me? I feel like I, I broke the bank. You hear me, big baby? So we go back outside. Um, we step on the strip, you know what I mean? Now, like I said, at this time, if you had white T-shirt and Jabos and some Jordans, you was fake-ass famous. Do you hear me, big baby? Um, you, you thought you was in some some Balenciagas or something with the latest Jordans and some Jabos on, and we were sticking to the code, 6823. Do you hear me, big baby? So we stepped out onto the uh, strip, and it just so happened that now, not only is it Lakeview together, but we got Oakdale with us. Then we got North Beach with us. Then we got uh, Q Street and Hunters Point. So we like down there 50 deep when we step out onto the strip, right? So as we step out onto the strip, my partner, Yellow Boy, you dig? You understand me? Uh, Yellow had been staying in sack for a minute, so we, was, we don't get to see Yellow that much. You feel me? And him and Drama was like brothers, you dig? So when we step out on the strip, here comes Yellow with the uh, VHS camera, that big joint. You know what I mean? Now you just put up your phone and you film shit and document it and you, you, you take it home and upload it to something. Back then, you had to have that VHS tape, big baby. You feel me? And uh, yeah, Yellow, when you see this, can we get the video? Can we get the Hot August Nights video? I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot right now, but can we get the video, big baby? I'm just saying. They wasn't there, big baby. They need to see this, you dig? So we step out on the thing. We see, no, let me rewind this. Let me, let me rewind before I get us outside. So we at the table. We've been at the table like four or five hours. My partner, Wolf, the last of the pills that we had, right, I gave him the Wolf the whole while we was gambling. So I turns to Wolf, right? I, we didn't make gambling four or five hours. We didn't drove. I'm ready to power up. I'm ready to reignite my weekend, you dig? So I go to Wolf. Wolf, let me get my thizzle. He started looking stupid. I said, Wolf, where's my pill at, dude? Uh, 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 I, I, I gave it to Mac Dre. I said, what? I, I, I gave it to Mac Dre, bro. Now, this is on God and everything I love. I was like, what, Wolf? You gave my pill to Mac Dre? 
You tripping, man. Now, I'm I'm a big Mac Dre fan. Don't get it twisted. I love the Mac, you feel me? But about my last thizzle at Hot Dog, Hot Dog is Nice in Reno, you gave my to who? I'm like, Wolf, man, you tripping, bro. This fool then gave my last blue dolphin to Mac Dre on some fan shit. You understand me? Now it's cool because I can tell a story about it. And it's epic, you dig? And, and, and I feel honored that Mac Dre got my last thizzle, you dig? But at that in that moment, at that moment, I was mad as a motherfucker, big baby. Do you hear what I'm talking about? This man that gave my last blue dolphin to Mac Dre, you understand me? So we at the table. After, I want to say maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes after he told me, who do I see walking? through the casino, over there like a, two tables down. Mac, motherfucking Dre, I was so tempted to leave the table, but like, hey, bro, I need that back. I don't know what he was thinking about, you feel me? But I'm just so stupid, I just yelled at him. Mac Dre, and the cold part about it is we all on thizzles. He looked up at me and started smiling and kind of did like this to me, you feel me? Like laughed and shit, you know what I mean? But I was I was mad as fuck. But once I seen Mac, you feel me? I felt cool. I'm like, okay, this nigga gave my dolphin. At least he didn't say he took it. You know what I'm talking about, though? Wolf, yeah, I'm still mad at you about that, too, Wolf, you dig? But anyway, so, yeah, we get outside, man. We see Yella, and Yella fucking walks up to us with the VHS camera. So as soon as we see Yella, all of us are high still, you dig? We all get in the street and start dancing because Yella got the camera. We going crazy. Now, this is before Trill TV. This is before Ghost Ride the Whip. This is when 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 the pill epidemic just hit us, you feel me? So everything was new to us. We was still we wasn't um actually glorifying it or 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 monetizing off of it yet. We was just in it. You feel me? We were just living it. So we get in the street, we start dancing, yelling and shit. This fool got the VHS camera on us. The whole the whole strip stops and freezes and turns to look like who is these dudes? It's 50 youngsters with white T-shirts on. They're in the middle of the street. They're going crazy. Reno Police Department was out there on horses. Man, they pulled up on them horses like they was in cars. Like, oh, no, no, no. Y'all ain't finna do this shit in Reno. I don't know what y'all doing. Take this shit back to Frisco and Oakland and, 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 and Richmond and shit. Y'all ain't fit to do this right here. So they pulled up on them horses like, hey, hey, we not about to do this. So to the point where they was then about to try to arrest us for, for I don't know, disturbing the peace or causing a ruckus. So it's 50 of us running through Circus Circus Hotel trying to get away from the police and the security in Reno, and they chasing us. So it's like 50 of us. All you can hear over the uh, – the walkie-talkies is, it's the white T-shirt gang. It's the white T-shirt gang. They're running through the casino. So we trying to get away, you feel me? We laughing. We enjoying ourselves. We get away, you know what I mean? Get away from them and go through the other side of the casino or something. And that was just one part of it. But we was in there just acting a fool. And it was it was a beautiful time because it was Frisco and we was all together. Like, nowadays, you can't get two neighborhoods from San Francisco to be together or Oakland, or any of these cities for that part. But at this time, you know what I mean? It was just like we was happy to be out of our regular environment and enjoying ourselves as a core, as a group. Do you hear me, big baby? And it was just a magnificent moment for us. So later on, um, we downtown arena. I remember we seen the hustler from Mob Figures. The hustler right there, he out there chilling, you feel me? He starts spitting the flow. Now it's about 20 of us surrounding him. We all spitting flows at the hustler. I know he like, man, these niggas about to rap me to death, you dig? Got me in downtown Reno surrounding me, spitting freestyles and shit, you know what I mean? We going crazy high as hell. We see the hustle, you know what I mean? So already we ain't even been there a, a day yet, and already we didn't have a beautiful time, you dig? We already done did some epic shit in the first, in the first you know what I mean? 21 hours that we in Reno acting a fool at Hot August Nights. So um, now we on the strip. And if you know how the Reno strip is, it's hella long. And it's only like one store on the whole strip. You dig what I'm talking about, Big Baby? So when you're trying to get some water or trying to get some alcohol, you got to walk a long motherfucking way to go get your blunt. So whatever you're going to get, get your blunt, your swishers, your water, your Hennessy. That one store is far as hell, and it's far from where everybody be standing at, which is usually in front of Circus Circus. So I done walked all the way down here to get me a water. Now, if you know about taking thistles and shit, you be dehydrated, you be running your mouth, you know, you be feeling yourself, you dig, big baby. So I done went and got this bottle of water, right? So as I'm coming back down the strip from getting my water, we done somehow got separated from everybody else. I got this big bottle of water. I'm thirsty. I'm dehydrated. I had to walk to go get it. Who do I see? 
other than big motherfucking drama. You feel me? Dra La Lizzy. Now, anybody who know drama know this nigga was ornery, was just disrespectful in, in a good way, you feel me? But he was just extra in every way, shape, form, and fashion. So drama is, you know he having a good time. He'd have been in the penitentiary for the last five years. He's like an uncaged beast when he gets out to these events. It's females everywhere. He don't know how to act. I remember he had on a Donald Duck iceberg shirt. Um, back at this time, it was some Oakland dudes who had a, a, a truck, a clothing truck. They were sick for this. They used to have iceberg on there. It was it was a uh, bootleg iceberg, but they was real uh, entrepreneurs, you feel me? So they would slide through the different hoods and first go and sell iceberg and different shit like this, you dig? So we would flag their ass down and have them pull up on Q Street and get all the bootleg iceberg we could get, you dig? This was when we was on the cold, but we was kind of drifting a little bit. We were fade off trying to upgrade a little bit. So... And they end up they end up getting robbed in in, in, in the projects of Patrol Hill. Niggas ran on the iceberg truck and emptied that thing off. It was iceberg and Patrol Hill for many months. You understand me? You wasn't there, big baby. You don't know about all that. But anyway, so Drama has on this Donald Duck iceberg shirt. Now I know he been going hard all day and all night, right? Cause the collar on the shirt is stretched out so damn far. I'm like, look at this fool looking like a fucking animal right now. So he walks up to me. He says, Juan, let me get some of that water. Now, Drama's a giant, anybody who knew him. So I just told you I walked about seven blocks to get this water. I'm dehydrated. I'm tired. You feel me? So I'm like, here, Drama, don't do too much. Meaning, don't kill my water, bro. Don't, you know what I mean? Save me some, man, because I already know how this fool is. This fool takes my water, right? He takes a sip, not even a big sip. He takes a sip of my water, right? And then pours the rest of my water bottle on the top of his motherfucking head. Ah, that felt good. I'm like, why would you take my water and pour it on your head, bro? Like, I'm thirsty than a motherfucker right now. I'm dying. I'm cotton mouth. I'm about to pass out. Why in the fuck would you pour my water on the top of your head, drama? And he, he he didn't hear none of that I was talking about. He didn't give a fuck. He didn't pour my water on the top of his head. Now this fucking Donald Duck iceberg shirt he got, the collar is hanging, plus it's wet. He just looking silly as hell. So now, you know what I mean, we need to get some rest. So I got the key to the room. We ain't been to the room yet. Now, nobody else has living quarters, you dig? None of my other 25 partners that I'm with have nowhere to sleep, you dig? So we go to the room. I go in the room. I didn't vow that I'm not letting nobody in the room. As I said, Big Drama is super disrespectful. He don't give a damn about nothing. I'm talking about shut up, wine. Open the door to the room. I'm like, man, this nigga right here. So we go in the room. It's 20 of us. Now, this is a little-ass motel with two, with two twin beds. Big drummer, big ass, lays out on one bed. It's 20 of us. He takes the whole bed. I'm like, drummer, it's all, it's all of us in here, bro. How you going to take a whole bed? He don't give a fuck. He lays down on the bed. It's people sleeping in the bathroom. They in the middle by the bed, over here on the side by the wall. We on the floors. We got this thing so packed like sardines. Now, I didn't told you we didn't been walking all day, right? Everybody done been running around sweating, stinking, you feel me? Man, niggas got to peeling their shoes off. It smelled like a YMCA gym locker in that joint. Man, I'm talking about smelling like straight feet up in this room. I'm like, man, y'all sick, dude. Ain't no way, ain't no female gonna wanna come up in here and y'all got it smelling like feet, bruh. Like, what, 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 are we, what are we doing here, man? Niggas didn't care, especially drama. His big ass feet stinking, he didn't give a damn. Feet uh, hanging all off the bed. He didn't took a whole bed. You dig what I'm talking about? We in this joint. We just going crazy. You know what I'm saying? So we didn't took a little nap. You dig? Got up. Went and got something to eat. We back outside hitting the strip, beating that thing up. So now the police, they own us. Because they like, every time they see us, they like, y'all group, y'all not finna act up. Y'all not finna show out. So they've been calling us the white t-shirt gang the whole weekend. You dig? Um... I think I got a picture from that hot dog. It's nice, man. I might post it on my Insta down the line, you dig? But that whole weekend at Hot Dog is Nice was an amazing time, you dig? It was just one of those epic moments that you will never forget in your life. Not only did we get out there and we, we, we laid it down for Frisco and for the city and got to chill with all our partners, you feel me, and made some memories like Drama resting in peace, you feel me? Pone resting in peace. Giggs is resting in peace. LeBeau resting in peace. There's so many of my partners from that time that ain't here no more, you dig? That all I got is those memories, you feel me? And it was just so epic. And 
A lot of times, you know, a lot of these events that we used to go to back in the days, a lot of these times that we had, our young partners, they don't get to experience that because of the beef, because of them clashing and going at it, you dig? You'll never see uh, North Beach, Oakdale, um, Q Street, Lakeview, all together in one, you feel me? At any event, enjoying themselves, having a good time, you feel me? And just living it up, making moments and laughing and shit. And it was just a real epic time. Not to mention, you know what I mean? We met Mac Dre. We got pictures with Mac Dre, you dig? And it was just one of them things, man. It was a, it was a, it was a beautiful event, man. And you know, hot August nights, man. You know what I mean? The white t-shirt gang, you dig? The cold 6823. It was real epic, man. But if you wasn't at hot August nights, man, when we took over the whole strip in Reno, if you ain't never met Mac Dre, do you hear me, big baby? If you don't know about orange tulips, red LVs, and blue dolphins, big baby, you wasn't there, big baby. K-I-U, the podcast. Tune in, tap in on YouTube when you see us, man. It's an epic thing, man. We're going to keep going over this history, man. Shout out to Glow House, man. It's bigger than life, man. K.I.